Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, my name is Dave Eisenstatter. I'm the editor of the Valley Advocate, and this is the Valley Advocate Podcast we do in collaboration with Amherst Media. I'm here with Gina Beavers, our arts and culture editor. Yes, you are. And we're here with Aaron Brando, a.k.a. Brando, a.k.a. DJ Hip Socket. <laughs> all, all, all of those are true. All of those are true. Uh, yeah, I was wondering about that. <laughs> he is the co-founder of Pollinate uh, Dance. Uh, why did I just lose that? Ecstatic Dance. Yeah. Well, I mean, Pollinate Dance is where w- you can find us on Facebook at Pollinate Dance. Our website is pollinatedance.com. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it is an ecstatic dance. So sometimes yeah. you can throw ecstatic in there. Okay. Who yeah. wouldn't want to, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so on uh, June 1, you are having your uh, 10th anniversary pretty big yeah 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 so tell us about pollinate tell us about pollinate hmm yeah it's uh it's a magical um growth out of the community um and it i feel like it really speaks to a need that people have for connection for embodied connection to themselves and to like each other and to like being in an organism that's operating as like one thing yeah mm. yeah and and trying to find that um, like we were talking about yesterday um, I feel like many of us me I'm trying to find that all the time I'm trying to find mm-hmm. connection to each person but I'm also trying to find a more of a collective spirit and yeah. I feel like music is a way um, that connects us and and dance also and together um, where it's not like a specific band but it's like a wide variety of like global bass yeah. and funk and soul and hip hop and and contemporary trap and dubstep and and just the the hottest freshest electronic music that's coming out that like has an eclectic sort of reach and mm-hmm. it's and it, and we are we're appealing to all different kinds of ages and people and creating a safe space yeah for something that's typically in a like in a dark club right hmm. so yeah. so especially um in a really fractured time that we live in right now I yeah. mean, something we spoke about it being a very divisive time yeah and people <clears throat> just by nature almost by nature we're very cut off from each other whether we're in our vehicles whether we're you know on our computers on our phones um to come to a place that's not only you have that uh, have a connection but it's a safe space which is also a, a much wanted and much needed. And in a value that we work hard at, we've had community meetings around how to create a safe space. We have guidelines that are helpful and printed so people can read and kind of understand like what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. We have like safety, like support people all the time at the dance so if anything's feeling awkward or uncomfortable there's a person that someone can go to it it's tricky you know dance is a dance is a risque kind of a thing and yes and the club and the club energy because we do throw a club night like it's like lighting sound system professional djs it's a hot place to get your dance on um So that has messages and that has cultural connotations and we're trying to like use that and have that like fun going out at night kind of vibe and then reinvent the culture around it so the culture is about respect and safety and authentic connection to yourself and to the room. Yeah. Can you talk, like what is ecstatic dance? What does it look like? Like how, what is it? Some of the things that are different about ecstatic dance that you won't find at a club is first thing is it's in a dance studio. Mm-hmm. So it's on like a gorgeous hardwood floor. Yeah. Um, people take their shoes and socks off at the door. Um, so there's a stronger connection to the floor. People like aren't just dancing vertically. People are rolling around on the floor and getting way down um, and also dancing vertically. Um, and also, I think ecstatic dance, the priority and the value, the shared value is dance. 
yeah. not talking, not socializing. Those are all happening and those are all outcroppings and like totally awesome um, uh, sort of the f- overflow of our joy. But people are going there to sweat, to move, to get into their body and to connect with other people in a non, like in an embodied way. And I get a sense that it's not super structured, like there aren't specific steps or moves or anything. No, there's no, it's it's a free form. So, and that's what's also really unique about ecstatic dance is that people are encouraged to express their own individual unique selves. And um, there are so many moments where I've been looking out at the room and really seeing someone like inhabit their body mm in a way that's unique to themselves and discovering it for the first time in that way. Like discovering movement that's not your typical movement, discovering because everyone is encouraging that. That's happening everywhere. So you're seeing so many people individually express themselves and then it's contagious. And when people find their own movement expression and their own dance, it's a pretty empowering thing. It's like finding a part of yourself. Yeah. And I think that pollinate really lends itself and opens a space for people to find that part of themselves. How many people generally um, come to these things? And how many are you expecting for June 1st? Millions. (laughs) 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 Be prepared. We've got a big room. You remember Woodstock? (laughs) Yeah. I I think a lot of people are not going to find their socks and shoes at the end. No, no, no. Uh, we have about 80 people mm-hmm. um, that come every month ish somewhere around there like sometimes it's more sometimes it's less the room feels full because people are moving so much um, so the energy is always uh, alive and circulating um, but yeah generally we get about 80 and we have teenagers um, not a whole lot lots of college kids um, and a lot of like young professionals and then we have older people um, retired people and and just it's really a place that's super welcoming that's great. Um, and it's and it's pretty amazing to see um, the those kinds of bridges being uh, sort of forged where I see like you know like an older gentleman who's like boogieing with like a younger uh, with a younger guy oh and that's the other thing it's really really um, challenging like heteronormative mm. um, behavior that happens at clubs and I'm so psyched about the valley and I'm so and I want to give like a shout out to like um, all the all the sort of um, dances that are happening that are that are creating safe spaces for for queer people mm. and I think that pollinate like you'll see like guys dancing with other guys and of course women dancing with other women and it just sort of challenges and opens up like another kind of connection that's not that's not in the like heteronormative um society that like is so often in the club scene Mm -hmm. um so you'll see like an older guy and a younger guy like having it out on the dance floor (laughs) and it's really it's really awesome to see that it's really um, I think it's empowering for for us to to communicate and to connect with people that aren't in our in our little sphere of age and gender. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So what's changed in ten years? You started out. This was an offshoot of Dance Spree. Yeah. So what did you say? What's changed what's over the changed ten? over the last ten years? Ten years is a long time. Ten years to keep is something a long. Lo- I know. I know. <laughs> you want to take it over? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. 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 All right. Good. Um, I think what's changed is like the consistency. I think what's changed is that it's now woven into the fabric of this dance community. Yeah. This and people identify themselves with going. Like there, it's on the calendar. It's a constant. It's the first Friday of every month. There's like, it's a ritual. Yeah. It's become a ritual for people, and I think that helps. There's a core group of people that just are showing up every time. So it's like we are growing that um that sort of cell that membrane is of of people who are committed and coming every time is just strengthening and growing and that's the difference like 10 years ago like every single time was like is anyone gonna show up (laughs) and now it's just like it's on yeah like every month it's on and and because pollinate has just gotten out so yeah. much as a name, like people are like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, what, what is that? What is that? So more 
people like the the reach is getting further and further so while we have 80 people each time and we have this strong core group like the people around that are like always circling and cycling and changing and it's yeah. really interesting to see who comes in and who gets impacted by right. this experience that's great so there's there's um nourishment at your um dances yeah we have um mostly um uh, a friend of ours kale um mm-hmm. he he's got his own business he's a wonderful like Mostly vegan, but vegetarian, super healthy, um, simple foods like cashew butters on noodles and or, or like little like vegetarian sushi wraps and that kind of stuff. Also like cacao, like really good, rich, deep, like chocolate drinks and smoothies. And lately, uh, so Kale gets busy. He's uh, he's like the head chef for Unifier yeah. and, and for, for Dance Camp New England. Um, so he gets busy on the weekends because mm-hmm. he's got a lot of gigs. And and there's another a woman named Stillwater who comes in and she also just crushes it with the food. Just like simple, nourishing, easy to eat, and keeps people like energized through the yeah, dance. And right. I was saying I was saying to you the other day like, yeah, we're 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 alcohol. We're not like strictly alcohol free, but yeah. people just don't go there because <clears throat> the intoxication and the energy is so high and the inhibitions are down because right. people are expressing themselves. So you don't need to like take a substance that's gonna like help you dance. Like the energy is the substance that's helping people dance. So then people get tired, mm-hmm. right? Like they actually <laughs> need like food. Yeah, you know? <laughs> what so, a concept. I know, I know. So um, it's really, it's a real blessing to have kale and still water supporting that and um, providing that kind of like really high quality nourishment. That's great. Yeah. There's a lot, I mean, so a, a dance community that I'm a part of is the Contra dance community. Oh and yeah, man. There's a lot of. <laughs> that's a, that's a great one. crazy. Man, that, God. Just thinking about it gets me dizzy. <laughs> right, yeah. But I, what strikes me is so many of the things that you're talking about are the exact same things that are, are um, trying to be addressed in that community, like the um, you know more uh, you know challenging gender norms being a more substance-free space. But it just it strikes me as that, like the main big difference is that with ecstatic dance, it's there's it's kind of this no no real structure, no rules kind of movement, whereas uh, contra dance is very prescribed and you know, you do this and you gotta be at this spot at this time. And it's just like a very interesting thing that these two kind of seemingly opposite types of dance are kind of striving to get to the same place. Yeah, it's because the coin, it's two sides of the coin and the coin is connection. Mm. And like I've Mm. been to contra dance and it is really like, there is a lot of intentional connection. And while we don't have a setup that creates that, like the vibe and the energy is really encouraging connection. Mm. Um, and like we said, people are craving that mm-hmm. and I'm craving yeah. that. And, and I, I really get fed off of seeing it. You know, like I'm often really busy at Pollinate, so I'm wearing, like I, it's hard for me to totally drop in a mm-hmm. lot because I'm wearing a lot of different hats. But just seeing the kinds of connections that are happening um, is it really nourishes my soul and feeds me. It's why this thing keeps going. And like people, like like people have met and gotten married and have children now, like <laughs> from like but like holiday. a sexy dance that they had at yeah. Pollinate, or like and and or, and they were friends before that, yeah. and then like something like just clicked, you know. And um, it's just really. Uh, I, it's just wonderful to create a space where anything can happen. Do you mm. see a way to kind of expand that out from, so, you, you know, you, there's these connections that happen on the floor in, in that dance space. Like, do you see a way to create um, that type of connection in the larger community through dance or through something else? Well, one thing that I really, I don't know if this is totally answering the question, but one thing that I always get excited about is trying to partner with other organizations. A few years ago, we did we did an event with Grow Food Northampton, um, and I'm really excited. I mean, I, I love what, um, what Tony's doing, and I would love to support him. So, like creating like ways where other organizations can be represented that's that was the idea of pollinate mm-hmm. was ways that this could be a hub 
that helps like spread the pollination and the um, the energy and the focus and the attention to other people that are also like have dreams and, and want to promote whatever their dreams are. So I think in that way it ripples out. Um, and yeah, I mean people people meet they come every they come every month and and then there's a birthday party that's not <laughs> happening on a pollinate and then there's a potluck that's not happening on a pollinate yeah. and then there's like a, a challenge in the community where like someone someone felt violated and that gets discussed and taken care of mm. outside of pollinate so there's a lot of ways in which we're wrestling with issues and also celebrating each other in different areas of our lives that like spills out from the hub Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean those. You know, that's like such a. It's such a. I'm. I'm glad that you addressed that because, like the, um, just like people feeling violated or people actually getting, um, you know, uh, abused, attacked, or anything like that, and and kind of as you were saying before, in a dance space, some sometimes that kind of thing can be. It can just happen. Mm -hmm. and, well, well and I mean, in a club, in a club environment, yeah. it's like the norm, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, yes, right. I mean, the norm is to like for for someone to get like like encroached on and touched without asking. Like that's just like fending off. That is sort of what's happening all the time. And so at Polony, because we're creating a safe space and we're because we're creating a whole um, foundation of empowerment and encouragement of people to speak up and for for resource for there to be resources available that when it does happen and it does not happen very often but it doesn't not ever happen mm -hmm. that was like a triple negative <laughs> but understood. i think i got it you. doesn't yeah. not understood. ever happen <laughs> um but um when it does like we rally and we we figure it out and and it's not easy and it's and um I feel like that kind of situation that is popping up more and more in our culture with sure. Me Too and, mm -hmm. and with just the empowerment um, that is happening with people's voices being able to speak out, um, it's it's something that we're that we're addressing and that is a priority and and something that um, we hold dear. And it's a value and we're not doing it perfectly. There's a big big learning curve, a giant one for me personally. Mm -hmm. And I can say that it's it's on my radar all the time mm -hmm. now, and it's something that has like deeply, deeply impacted the way I'm seeing a public space. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for for coming yes. in. I really, really appreciate it. And you know, I think it's such a testament to your uh, organizing and energy that that ten you guys years. have been around for ten years. It's hard to let things go. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, I'm super excited. I'm super proud of this. And what I'm most excited about is continually um, trying to step away and see, like, that's where I see great leadership. Yeah. Like, great leadership is not about sailing the ship for 10 years. Great leadership is, like, getting the ship to sail and then seeing out who else can sail it. And I'm still working on that. And mm. we're still, like really doing our best to empower and encourage other people to step into roles and that's that's a place where i would love to see pollinate continue to go where it becomes more and more of a truly um shared shared um vision and it is that in people's hearts and i and i'm really mm. curious about making that also in the in the in the hierarchy and in the power structure and we'll just see how that goes because that also is a tricky yeah. A tricky negotiation yeah. and navigation to do. Yeah. Well, so awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank cool. you, Brando. Oh, thank you, Bo. DJ Hipsaw. Yeah, it. it's so nice to talk about this. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Congratulations yeah. on your 10 years. Please come. Please oh, it. Check fun. it out. You guys all have comps. Just say that you, you know <laughs> you're with the, you're the media. Um, <laughs> and and don't you can think just, we don't use that. Yeah. yeah all right. And just like peek in and see what it's like. That sounds great. Yeah. We we do have um uh like live music to start off, and that's another way oh, to like sort of help people connect like some people are just like allergic to canned electronic music yeah. or they think they are and then when you have a like a live cello player playing mm. it helps people like also get out of being a slave to a rhythm and being a slave to like a, a four count and it gets people to to really dance mm. within, like in the melodies mm -hmm. of things and listen to more than just the driving rhythm and i love that because that's where the nuance and where expression can come in where you get out of the you get out of the, the the primary rhythm 
and you get into the melodies underneath a lot of the time. So it empowers people to like open up their dancing and it also connects people to the floor and it's a very slow and like gentle beginning and it helps like warm up that organism together. So I really love that we have like live musicians that are playing often at the beginning from like nine to 10 and then 10 to 12 we like it's on like donkey call. <laughs> yeah, we turn we we turn it on. Maybe I have an advocate staff party. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, let's right? do it. Let's do it. You tell me when, where. We'll Got do it. it. Yeah. Good. yeah. Thank cool. you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate your support. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Thank you.